Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. Our last section of Chapter 10 deals with hydrates. And hydrates, just like to be hydrated, are going to deal with H2O, or water. Now, for this section, it's going to be a little bit easier than the last couple sections are, so that'll be a nice break. But we still have a little bit of work ahead of us here for hydrates. So hydrates, what hydrate is, and we're going to relate to them to the name and to their composition, and then we're going to look at percent of water in a hydrate. So hydrates are solid ionic compounds in which a specific number of water molecules are bound to its atoms. So our first step is we're going to be naming hydrates. Now naming hydrates, hydrates mean that there's water connected. So hydrates, water is connected to it. So we're going to use our naming of our ionic compounds plus a Greek prefix and then hydrate for how many waters we have attached. Little dot here we're going to notice here in a little while is our showing our connection between the waters and the compound. So as before blocking uh, first element from our second part calcium metal oxygen nonmetal so we have calcium oxygen is oxide and we notice we have two waters two from our gold packet Greek prefixes is di and then we end it with hydrate So calcium oxide dihydrate. For our second problem, iron transition element. Iron's a transition, so we've got to find its charge. Chlorine minus one times three gives us a minus three charge. So if chlorine's a minus three, iron must be a plus three in order to balance those two out. So iron must be a plus three here. So we have iron three chloride. Our second part then is we have six waters attached. Six in the Greek prefix, hexa, and then to attach the water, hydrate. So as we're going, what we have here, iron three chloride, hexahydrate. And our last one, MgSO4, seven H2Os, split up between the first two, whoops, cut off the sulfur a little bit, magnesium, SO4, polyatomic, so from your gold packet, you'll have to find what SO4 is. So we have magnesium, SO4 sulfate, and seven gold packet hepta H2O hydrate. So as we're going, it's naming of the ionic compound, and then we're going to go Greek prefix plus the hydrate word. So for each of these, the water molecules attached. Now going just the opposite way. Key part for the formula, we have the number of waters and a dot here to separate, so there's our dot, to separate the waters that are trapped with the ionic compound, the number indicates those number of waters. So first off, barium hydroxide, barium periodic table, group two is a plus two, hydroxide from your gold packet, polyatomic OH minus. When you crisscross, we end up with the formula BA, since hydroxide is a polyatomic, needs to be in parentheses 
too. So that's barium hydroxide. Our second part is octahydrate. Octa from your gold packet, Greek prefixes, octas for eight. So we're going to now separate with a dot the waters from the ionic compound. And in this case, octa is eight, eight H2Os. So barium hydroxide, octahydrate. Copper two sulfite, pentahydrate. Copper is a plus two. Sulfite, SO3, with a minus two charge. So when we crisscross, we don't need to write those numbers. So we have Cu, SO3. Penta for five, hydrate for our waters. Dot separates the waters from the rest of the ionic compound, five H2Os. And our last one, sodium acetate monohydrate. Sodium Na, which is a plus one. Acetate, one of our um, polyatomics, C2. H3O2 with a minus one charge. So when we crisscross those, we end up with sodium C2H3O2 for acetate and monohydrate. With monohydrate, we don't need to write the number one for mono. So it's just our dot separating the number of waters, one H2O from the rest of the compound. Now we have two kinds of hydrates. Hydrated compounds, hydrated compounds, to be hydrated you would need to have water. Hydrated compound hydrates have water molecules attached. So they have the dot how many ever waters. And hydrous compounds that are dehydrated they have lost their waters, so they will not have waters attached. So we won't even see anything written down there. So anhydrous, no waters attached. Hydrates have waters attached. Remember, those are two ionic compounds. And our last step, analyzing hydrates to find the percent composition of water. We're going to go through and find the mass of each part of the hydrate individually the mass of the ionic compound and the mass of the waters and then we're going to take the mass of the waters divided by the entire mass of the hydrate times a hundred so we need the whole mass divided by the waters mass so we're going to go through and we're going to find the percent compositions of the three compounds or three of the compounds from up above um, the first one we're going to look at iron three chloride hexahydrate our hexahydrate so to find the mass of each part of the hydrate individually. So your first step is we have irons, chlorines, and hydrates. So to work through this problem, we're going to find the mass of the entire, and we're going to find the mass of just the waters. So there's two things we're going to be looking for. So first off, from the periodic table, iron's mass, chlorine's mass, hydrogen and oxygen's mass, and the amount of each one. So as we're going, we found the mass of just the iron chloride, the mass of the water, and this is the total mass of the iron chloride hexahydrate. Now we're going to take that entire mass and the mass of just the waters. This is just of the H2O's, nothing else. So now we have the mass of the waters and we have the mass of the total molecule, or excuse me, the total compound with the hydrates attached. Our next step then is we've got to take the mass of the waters divided by the mass of the entire hydrate composition times 100 to get to a percent. So we're going to take mass of the water divided by the mass of the total compound 
times 100. In this case, 40% of that entire compound would be the mass of the hydrate, or 40% by weight would be the water attached to that compound. We're going to let you try 45 and 40, or 45B and 45C. You can find those from the problems up above um, with copper sulfate and from sodium, uh, sodium acetate monohydrate. Now, one thing is, after you've worked through these problems, We'll have you unpause and check over your answers to see if you have any questions. All right, so welcome to back. What we're going to see is we have copper, sulfate, pentahydrate. Now, one thing is that we notice that there's water here because we want the entire mass of the compound and just the mass of the water. Now, when we look at this one, notice we have oxygen here and oxygen here because when we separate those two, this oxygen and this oxygen amount are in two separate categories. We have the mass of the oxygen that's from the copper sulfate, or sulfite, and we have the mass of the oxygen from the waters. So our first step is to find the mass of the compound, in this case 233.72 grams per mole would be the mass of the entire compound. So that's the mass of everybody. Our second step is to find the mass of just the water. Now if we take those two numbers, mass of the water divided by the mass of the entire compound times 100 about 38.55% by mass of this compound is water. And so what we're saying here is that as a hydrate, 38.55% of the water, our mass is by water. And then the final problem that you had was sodium acetate monohydrate. Now notice again, we want the mass of the entire compound and the mass of just the hydrate. Notice we have hydrogens and oxygens in two different places. They are for two separate parts. So making sure we keep them separated here. So our mass from the periodic table and the amount from the chemical formula for each one. We can find the total mass contributes. So in the end, the total mass of our compound with the waters 116.6 or 0.06 grams. Now what we need to do is find the mass of our waters. In this case we have one water and we take the mass of the water divided by the mass of the whole. Times 100 to get us our percent and in the end 15.52% of our compound by mass is water. So if you were to remove that water, you would remove 15.52% of its weight or 18.02. So the percent of water versus the percent of our entire compound. So that will wrap up our hydrates and our chapter 10 point our chapter 10.